Oracle continues to enhance MySQL HeatWave at a very rapid pace. The company is now in its fourth major release since the original announcement in December 2020. One of the main criticisms of MySQL HeatWave is that it only runs on OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, and is a lock-in to Oracle's cloud. Oracle recently announced that HeatWave is now going to be available on AWS's cloud, and it announced its intent to bring MySQL HeatWave to Azure. So MySQL HeatWave on AWS is a significant TAM expansion move for Oracle because of the momentum AWS cloud continues to show and evidently the HeatWave engineering team has taken the development effort from OCI and is bringing that to AWS with a number of enhancements that we're going to dig into. Today, Nipin Argawal, Senior Vice President of MySQL HeatWave at Oracle is back with me on a CUBE conversation to discuss the latest HeatWave news. And we're eager to hear any benchmarks relative to AWS or any others. Nippon has been leading the HeatWave engineering team for over 10 years and has over 185 patents in database technology. Welcome back to the show, Nippon. Good to see you. Thank you, Dave. Very happy to be back. Now, for those who might not have kept up with the news, uh, to kick things off, give us an overview of MySQL HeatWave and its evolution so far. Sure. So MySQL HeatWave is a fully managed MySQL database service offering from Oracle. Traditionally, MySQL has been designed and optimized for transaction processing. So customers of MySQL, when they had to run analytics or when they had to run machine learning, they would extract the data out of MySQL into some other database for doing analytic processing or machine learning processing. MySQL HeatWave provides all these capabilities built in to a single database service, which is MySQL HeatWave. So customers of MySQL don't need to move the data out. With the same database, they can run transaction processing, analytics, mixed workloads, machine learning, all with a very, very good performance and very good price performance. Furthermore, one of the design points of HeatWave is, is a scale-out architecture. So the system continues to scale and perform very well, even when customers have very large data sizes. So we've seen some interesting moves by Oracle lately, the collaboration with Azure. We've, we've covered that pretty extensively. What was the impetus here for bringing MySQL HeatWave onto the AWS cloud? What were the drivers that you considered? So Dave, one of the uh, observations is that um, a very large percentage of users of MySQL HeatWave are uh, AWS users who are migrating off Aurora or Redshift, right? So already we see that uh, uh, a good percentage of MySQL HeatWave customers are migrating from AWS. However, there are some AWS customers who are still not able to migrate to OCI, uh, to MySQL HeatWave. And the reason is because of um, exorbitant egress cost, which AWS charges. So in order to migrate a workload from AWS to OCI, AWS charges a very high egress fees, which becomes prohibitive for the customer. Or the second um, uh, example we have seen is that the latency of accessing a database, which is outside of AWS is very high. So there's a class of customers who would like to get the benefits of MySQL HeatWave, but were unable to do so. And with this support of MySQL HeatWave inside of AWS, these customers can now get all the goodies of uh, and the benefits of MySQL HeatWave without having to pay the high egress fees or without having to suffer with the poor latency, which is because of the AWS architecture. Okay, so you're basically meeting the customers where they are. So was this a straightforward like lift and shift from, from Oracle Cloud Infrastructure to AWS? No, um, it is not. Because one of the design goals we have with MySQL HeatWave is that we want to provide our customers with the best price performance, regardless of the cloud. So when we decided to offer MySQL HeatWave on AWS, um, we have optimized MySQL HeatWave on AWS. So one of the things to point out is that this is a service where the data plane, control plane, and the console are natively running on AWS. And the benefit of doing so is that now we can optimize MySQL HeatWave for the AWS architecture. In addition to that, we have also announced a bunch of new capabilities as a part of the service, which will also be available to the MySQL HeatWave customers on OCI. But we just announced them and uh, we are offering them as a part of the MySQL HeatWave offering on AWS. So I just want to make sure I understand this. It's not, not like you just wrapped your stack 
in a container and stuck it into AWS to be hosted, it, you're saying you're actually taking advantage of the capabilities of the AWS cloud natively. And I think you've made some other enhancements as well that you're alluding to. Can, can you maybe uh, elucidate on those? Sure. So for starters, um, we have taken the MySQL HeatWave code and we have optimized it for the AWS infrastructure with its compute network and such, right? As a result, customers get very good performance, uh, end price performance uh, with MySQL HeatWave in AWS. That's one, right? Performance. Second thing is we have uh, designed a new interactive console for the service, which means that customers can now uh, provision their instances with a console, but in addition, they can also manage their schemas. They can run queries directly from the console. Autopilot is integrated with the console. We have introduced performance monitoring. Right? So a lot of capabilities which we have introduced as a part of the new console. The third thing is that uh, we have added a bunch of new security features. Uh, we have uh, exposed some of the security features which were a part of the MySQL Enterprise Edition as a part of the service, which gives uh, customers now a choice of using these features to build more secure applications. And finally, we have extended MySQL Autopilot for a number of OLTP use cases. In the past, MySQL Autopilot had a lot of capabilities for analytics, and now we have augmented MySQL Autopilot to offer capabilities for OLTP workloads as well. Yeah, but there was something in your press release called auto thread pooling, says it provides higher and sustained throughput at high concern, concern, concurrency by determining optimal number of transactions which should be executed. Uh, what is that all about, the auto thread pool? It seems pretty interesting. How, how does it affect performance? Can you help us understand that? Yes, and this is one of the capabilities I was alluding to, which we have added in MySQL Autopilot for transaction processing. So here's the basic idea. If you have a system where there's a large number of OLTP transactions coming in right, at a high degrees of concurrency in many of the existing systems or MySQL based systems, it can lead to a state where there are few uh, transactions executing, but a bunch of them can get blocked. With um, autopilot thread pooling, what we basically do is we do workload aware admission control. And what this does is it figures out that what's the right scheduling for all of these algorithms so that either the transactions are executing or as soon as something frees up, they can start executing. So there is no transaction which is blocked. The advantage to the customer of this capability is twofold. A, they get significantly better throughput compared to a service like Aurora at high levels of concurrency. So at high concurrency, for instance, um, MySQL HeatWave, because of this capability, the auto thread pooling offers up to 10 times higher throughput compared to Aurora. That's the one first benefit, better throughput. The second advantage is that the throughput of the system never drops, even at high levels of concurrency. Whereas in the case of Aurora, the throughput goes up, but then at high concurrencies, let's say starting, say uh, level of 500 or something, it depends upon the underlying ship you're using, the throughput starts dropping. Whereas with MySQL HeatWave, the throughput never drops. Now, the ramification for the customer is, that if the throughput is not going to drop, the user can start off with a small shape, get the performance and be assured that even if their workload increases, they will never get a performance which is worse than what they're getting with lower levels of concurrency. So this lets, leads to customers provisioning a shape which is just right for them. And if they need, they can uh, go with the larger shape, right? They don't like, you know, overpay. So those are the two benefits, better performance and sustained uh, throughput, regardless of the level of concurrency. So how do we quantify that? I know you've got some benchmarks. How, how can you share comparisons with other cloud databases? I'm especially interested in, in Amazon's own databases. They're obviously very popular. And, and are you publishing those again on, on GitHub as you have done in the past? Take us through the benchmarks. Sure. So uh, benchmarks uh, are important because that gives customers a sense of what performance to expect and what price performance to expect. So we have run a number of benchmarks. And yes, all these benchmarks are available on GitHub for customers to take a look at. So we have performance results on all the three classes of workloads, OLTP, analytics, and machine learning. So let's start with OLTP. For OLTP, and primarily because of the auto thread pooling feature, we show that for TPCC, for a 10 gig data set, at high levels of concurrency, HeatWave offers up to 10 times better throughput 
and this performance is sustained. Whereas in the case of Aurora, the performance really drops. Right? So that's the first thing that uh, 10 terabyte, PP, uh, sorry, 10 gigabyte PPCC, high concurrency, the performance or the throughput for Heatwave is 10 times better than Aurora. For analytics, we have done a comparison of MySQL Heatwave in AWS and compared with Redshift, Snowflake, Google BigQuery. We find that the price performance of MySQL Heatwave compared to Redshift is seven times better. So MySQL Heatwave in AWS provides seven times better price performance than Redshift. That's a very uh, interesting result to us, which means that customers of Redshift are really going to take uh, the service seriously because they're going to get seven times better price performance. And this is all running in AWS. So compared. Oh, go ahead, please yeah. carry on. Yeah. And then I was going to say compared to like Snowflake, um, Heatwave in AWS offers 10 times better price performance. And compared to Google BigQuery, it offers 12 times better price performance. And this is based on a four terabyte TPCH workload. Uh, results are available on GitHub. And then the third category is machine learning. And for machine learning, uh, for training, the performance of MySQL Heatwave is 25 times faster compared to Redshift ML. Right? So on all the three workloads, we have uh, benchmarks uh, and results, and all of these scripts are available on GitHub. Okay, so you're comparing uh, MySQL Heatwave on AWS to Redshift and Snowflake on AWS, and you're comparing MySQL Heatwave on AWS to BigQuery, obviously running on, on Google. Um, you know, one of the things Oracle's done in the past when you get to price performance, and I've always you know, tried to call foul, is you'll like double your price for, for running the Oracle database, uh, not Heatwave, but the Oracle database on, on AWS, and then you'll show how it's, it's so much cheaper on, on Oracle. And we'll be like, okay, come on. But they're not doing that here. You're basically taking MySQL Heatwave on AWS, I presume you're using the same pricing uh, for whatever, EC2, whatever else you're using, storage, um, reserved instances, that's apples to apples on AWS and you have to obviously do some kind of mapping for, for Google, for BigQuery. Can, can you just verify that for me? Right, we have been more than fair, right? <laughs> on two dimensions. The first thing is when I'm talking about the price performance for say analytics, right? For uh, with MySQL Heatwave, the cost I'm talking about for MySQL Heatwave is the cost of running transactional processing, analytics, and machine learning, right? So it's a fully loaded cost for the case of MySQL Heatwave. Whereas when I'm talking about Redshift or when I'm talking about Snowflake, I'm just talking about the cost of these databases for running analytics only. Right? So it's not including the source database, which may be Aurora or some other database, right? So that's the first aspect that for uh, Heatwave, it's the cost uh, for running all three kinds of workloads, whereas for the competition, it's only for running analytics. The second thing is that for these other services, whether it's Redshift or Snowflake or such, right, we are talking about one year fully paid upfront cost, right? So that's what most of the customers would pay, or many of the customers would pay, that they will sign a one year contract and pay all the costs ahead of time because they get, you get a discount. So we are using that price in the case of Snowflake, the cost we're using is the standard edition uh, price, not the enterprise edition price. So yes, we have been uh, more than fair in this comparison. Yeah, I think that's an important point. I saw an analysis by Mark Stamer uh, on Wikibon where he was doing the TCO comparisons. And, and I mean, it, when, if you have to use two separate databases and two separate licenses and you have to do ETLing and all the labor associated with that, that that's, that's a big deal and you're not even including that aspect in, in your comparison. So that's pretty impressive. To what do you attribute that, you know, given that unlike OCI, within the AWS cloud, you don't have as much control over the underlying hardware. Right. So look, hardware is one aspect. Okay, so there are three things uh, which give us this advantage. The first thing is um, we have designed Heatwave for a scale out architecture. So we came up with new algorithms. We have come up with like say, uh, one of the design points for Heatwave is a massively partitioned architecture, which leads to a uh, very high degree of parallelism, right? So that's a lot of IP which we have built. So that's the first part. The second thing is that although we don't have control over the hardware, but the second design point for Heatwave is that it is optimized for commodity cloud and the commodity infrastructure. So we kind of analyze 
what is say the compute we get, how much of network bandwidth do we get, how much of like say object store bandwidth we get in AWS, and we have tuned HFIF for that. That's the second point. And the third thing is MySQL Autopilot, which provides machine learning based automation. So what it does is that as the user's workload is running, it learns from it, it improves uh, like uh, all the various parameters in the system. So the system keeps getting better as you run more and more queries. And this is a third thing, uh, as a result of which we get a significant edge over the competition. Interesting. I mean, I, I, look, any ISV can go on any cloud and take advantage of it. And that's, <laughs> I love it. We live in a new world here. How about machine learning workloads? What, what did you see there in terms of performance and benchmarks? Right. So machine learning, we offer three capabilities. Training, which is fully automated, running inference, and explanations. So one of the things which many of our customers told us coming from the enterprise is that explanations are very important to them because uh, customers want to know that why did the, the system uh, uh, choose a certain prediction, right? So we offer explanations for all models which have been generated by heat wave event. That's the first thing. Now, one of the interesting things about training is that training is usually the most expensive phase of machine learning. So we have uh, spent a lot of time improving the performance of training. So we have a bunch of techniques which we have um, developed inside of Oracle to improve the training process. For instance, we have uh, MetaLearn proxy models which really give us an advantage. We use adaptive sampling. We have um, invented new techniques for parallelizing the hyperparameter search. Right? So as a result of my, a lot of this work, our training is about 25 times faster than Redshift ML. And all the data is uh, uh, inside the database. All this processing is being done inside the database. Right? So it's much faster. It is inside the database. And I want to point out that there is no additional charge for the heat wave customers because we're using the same cluster. We're not invoking any other service. So all of these machine learning capabilities are being offered at no additional charge inside the database and at a performance which is significantly faster than Redshift ML. Are, are you taking advantage of, or is there any uh, 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 need, not need, but any advantage that you can get if to by exploiting things like Graviton, We've talked about that a little bit in the past, or or Trainium. You just mentioned training. So custom silicon that AWS is doing. Are you taking advantage of that? Do you need to? Can you maybe give us some insight there? Sure. So there are two things, right? We are always evaluating what are the choices we have from a hardware perspective, and is there an opportunity for us to leverage it, right? And um, like all the things you mentioned about, like say Graviton, we have considered them. But there are two things to consider. One is HeatWave is a in-memory system, right? So a heat wave is a big uh, is the dominant cost. The uh, processor is a, a, a percent of the cost, but memory is a dominant cost. So what we have evaluated and found is that the current shape which we are using is pro going to provide our customers with the best price performance. That's the first thing. The second thing is that there are opportunities at times when we can use a specialized processor for accelerating the workload a bit, but then it becomes a matter of the cost to the customer. The advantage of our current architecture is on the same hardware, Customers are getting very good OLTP performance, very good analytic performance, and very good machine learning performance. If you were to go with a specialized processor, it may accelerate, say, machine learning, but then it's an additional cost which the customers will need to pay. So we are very sensitive um, to the customer's request, which is usually to provide very good performance at a very low cost. And what we feel is that the current design we have is providing customers very good performance and very good price performance. Yeah, so one, part of that is architectural, uh, the memory intensive nature of, of heat wave. The other is AWS pricing. If AWS yes. pricing were to flip, it might make more sense for you to take advantage of something like, like Tranium. Okay, great, thank you. I want to go back to the benchmarks, because benchmarks, are, they're sometimes they're, they're artificial, right? They, like, I, like a car can go from zero to 60 in two seconds, but I might not be able to experience that level of performance. Do you, do you have any real world numbers from customers? that have used MySQL HeatWave on, on AWS and how they look at performance? Yes, absolutely. So uh, the MySQL HeatWave service on AWS, this has been in beta for like since November, right? So we have a lot, lot of customers who have tried the service. And what actually we have found is that many of these customers um, are planning to migrate from Aurora to MySQL HeatWave. And what they find is that the performance difference is actually much more pronounced than what I was talking about. Because with Aurora, the performance is actually much poorer compared to uh, 
um, like what I talked about. So in some of these cases, the customers found an improvement from 60 times to 140 times, right? So heat wave was 140, up to 140 times faster. It was much less expensive. And the third thing, which is, you know, noteworthy is that customers, they need to change their application. So if you ask the top three reasons why customers are migrating, it's because of this. No change to the application, much faster, and it is cheaper. Right? So in some cases, like say Johnny Bytes, what they found is that the performance of their application for the complex queries was about 60 to 90 times faster. Then we had 6D technologies. What they found is that the performance of Heatwave compared to Aurora was 139 times faster. So yes, we do have many such examples from real workloads from customers who have tried it. And uh, all across, what we find is Heatwave offers better performance, lower cost, and a single database such that it is compatible with all existing MySQL based of applications and workloads. Hmm. Really impressive. I mean, the analysts I talked to, they're all gaga over heat wave and I can see, I can see why. Okay, last question, maybe, maybe two and one. Uh, what's next in terms of new capabilities that customers are going to be able to leverage and any other clouds that you're thinking about? We, we talked about that up front. But. Right, so in terms of the capabilities you have seen, like they have been, you know, uh, nonstop, uh, attending to the feedback from the customers and reacting to it. And also we have been uh, innovating like organically. So that's something which is going to continue. So yes, you can fully expect that we will not rest and continue to innovate. And with respect to the other clouds, yes, we are planning to support MySQL HeatFib on Azure. And this is something which will be announced in the near future. Great. All right, thank you, Nippon. Really appreciate the, the overview. Congratulations on, on the work. Really exciting news that you're moving MySQL Heatwave into other clouds. It's something that we've been expecting for some time. So it's great to see you guys uh, 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 making that move. And oh, as always, Nippon, great to have you on theCUBE. Thank you for the opportunity, Dave. All right, and thank you for watching this special CUBE conversation. I'm Dave Vellante and we'll see you next time.